For the fourth round of the World Rally Championship, we move to the island of Corsica. The first of the old tarmac events of this year's World Rally Championship. Closed public roads around the Mediterranean island with a culture all of its own. Colin, how does Corsica differ from the tarmac rallies in the uh, British Isles? It's just uh, generally a lot more difficult. It's very, very twisty and long corners. Uh, the line's very important, whereas at home they're a lot shorter corners and a lot easier. You can see through most of the corners. Here you can't see the end of the corner, which makes it very difficult. Very difficult indeed for the Subaru team, who were still struggling with their power output in comparison with the opposition. McRae was unhappy with that. Despite driving as hard as he knew how, he couldn't bet a seventh place on the opening legs. Tidiness and accuracy is absolutely crucial on the Corsica, and no one better to demonstrate it than Carlos Saints. Inch perfect, right on the very limit. But even Sainz and Moya couldn't bet a fourth place on the opening stages of the event. The Italian, Piero Liatti, was making his second start for the Subaru team. And on the tarmac, he proved capable of matching both Sainz and McRae's times. An impressive fifth place. for Science, fifth for Leati, and seventh for McRae meant that Subaru would have some work to do on the final day. And drama in the Toyota camp too, Dennis Giraudet having to stand in for co-driver Bernardo Celli on Didier Oriol's car. Oh, of course, it's not easy. Uh, oh, Gerard, Denis Giraudet, it's a, it's a good professional, but for him, it's the first time he come with me and uh, he has absolutely no practice at the stage, so uh, we, must, uh, we must wait and see what happens. But... We see, we try. And Toyota looks strong on this, their home event for Didier Oriol. With his new co-driver alongside him, the two adapt and fit together well. Shuridei working hard on his borrowed pace notes from Bernardo Celli. But they're good enough to get the pairing up to third overall as they enter the final day's motorsport. There's no room for a single mistake as speeds reach over 120 miles an hour. However, things weren't going so well for his teammate Juha Kankanen. Never a specialist on the tarmac, Kankanen was further suffering from a steering problem. At intermittent moments, the steering was going rigid on the Finnish driver. Not what you want on the Corsican island. And keep right over 40 to long K left over crest. 50 long bad right tights to 90 right over bridge. And very long bad left. 30. Long flat right over crest, 70. Down in ninth place, Kankerman was all for retirement, but the team management told him to press on to gain those vitally needed manufacturer's points. Armin Schwartz, though, was less lucky. The German was pushing hard, but he was set for retirement.
the problem on the road section uh, after the first stage this morning. We lost something on the alternator and uh, on the road section and then we didn't get the power anymore. And we ran out of electricity and we stopped on the road section, couldn't repair it. So just two Toyotas left in the running with Didier Oriol though in third place and Kankanen holding on in ninth. But this was the rally where Ford came back to the fore. Francois Delacour blasted through the stages, second at the end of the second leg. The change from a seven to a six speed gearbox plus Catherine Francois on the pace notes seemed to work. But for Delacour, the new gearbox with its unaccustomed gear change pattern posed a problem. I have done a big mistake because I was thinking that uh, I had a uh, seven speed and I was uh, trying to find uh, the first gear down and it was up, then uh, I spin and then the engine stopped, I lost about 10 seconds. But despite Delacour's problem, there was still a Ford out in front. His teammate Bruno Thierry was storming through the Corsican stages. Fastest on the first five special stages, just sharing one time with Delacour, Thierry was the man to beat and looked in superlative form. Yes, I am very happy in the moment. You know, it is the first time in my life uh, to be in the in the leading, uh, yes, it is a uh, it is a crazy moment in the moment. I I think it's difficult now to to keep the the pressure, but I try to do my best. So was this a world championship renaissance for Ford? Well, the third driver in the team too was up into the top ten. The local hero Patrick Bernardini, Mr Corsica, was up to eighth overall. The crowd appreciate his spectacular driving style. So Ford back at the front at the end of the second leg. Bruno Thierry leads Francois Delacour on the Corsica rally, which sees the debut of the new Mitsubishi. The Lancer Evo 3 with its distinctive deep chin spoiler and huge radiator air intake is making its debut in the hands of Tommy Mackinnon, 10th overall, and Andrea Aghini. Mackinnon coming to terms with the new car on unaccustomed tarmac very quickly indeed. Sophisticated new transmission system makes the car even easier to drive on the limit and Mackinnon is taking full advantage. But he's comprehensively outpaced by Andrea Aghini. The Italian tarmac specialist certainly knows the way to pedal the new Mitsubishi. Sixth overall at the end of day two, it's obvious that the rugby-based rally art concern have got a potential winner on their hands for the future. It's all the better for the Mitsubishi team because Aghini rolled his car and nearly destroyed it on the eve of the rally in shakedown testing. But notwithstanding that, he's sixth and Mackinnon's tenth as the rally enters its final stages. Overall, though, it's a Ford 1 2 with Bruno Thierry and Francois Delacour heading the field, Oriol third in his Toyota ahead of the Subarus of Sainz and Liati. Aghini's sixth, McRae seventh, Bernardini eighth, Kankanen and Mackinnon round out the top ten as the final day dawns. And it dawns with Bruno Thierry in emphatic command. Fastest on the opening two special stages of the day, he extends his lead. Looks like a man that can't be beaten. 
but around the corner, at the next service area, disaster looms. Officially, it's only a refuelling point. That means that Thierry has to carry out any maintenance himself. It was not really a, a service, it was a, a refueling and for the mechanics it was not possible to, to change the, the, the parts and uh, I have I tried to, to repair by myself but it was not possible. For the mechanics it was not possible to, to change the, the part and I think it was for them it was only for sure only 10 minutes 10 minutes to change this, this part. And uh, now uh, it was not possible for us to, to keep the lead and now uh, we are out the race. Portuguese Rui Madeira was notching up yet another Group N victory, heading to a potential world title for the Mitsubishi team. Meanwhile in the Toyota, Nicky Grist was working hard alongside Juha Kankanen. 40th, not bad left. For sure, if you... If you get car sick, I mean, there's no way you can be a co-driver, that's sure. The temperature in the car, the braking to and froing, but, I mean, your concentration has to be on the notes, because one missed call, or one misheard call, and it could be all over. And long medium left, and a very long fast right to crest. I have a lot of trust in each other. I mean, I trust him a lot, obviously, because he's driving, and also he's trusting me because what I'm telling him is what he's driving. Well, despite that trust, Kankanen again had an off, dropping to 10th place in the final reckoning. That allowed Philip Bogowski to move up into 9th. The little Renault Clio Maxi heading for yet another very spectacular Formula 2 championship victory. Heading for 8th place, Tommy Mackinnon gave his Mitsubishi an excellent debut run. And the spectacular driving style of Patrick Bernardini, the Corsican local hero, took him to 7th place. Next came the fleet of Subaru Impretzas, Pierre Eliati heading for sixth. Forty-six seconds ahead of the Italian was the Scotsman, Colin McRae. His fifth place belies the jinx on cars carrying number four. Attilio Bettiger crashed here fatally when carrying number four in 1985, and likewise Henry Toivonen when he died in 1986. McRae has laid the ghost to rest. Meanwhile, Carlos Sainz was heading for a strong fourth place with Louis Moyer. Near 20 seconds ahead of McRae, Sainz was being pushed all the way. Italian flags were flying for Andrea Aghini, absolutely delighted with his new Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution 3 and with his third place. Francois Delacour in second place still. Despite the man ahead of him, Bruno Thierry, dropping out, he was overtaken at the same time by the flying Didier Auriol. Despite the fancy footwork and Catherine Francoise on the pace notes, the escort driver could do nothing about his French compatriot Auriol in the Toyota Celica GT4. At the head of the field, for the, only the final two stages of the event, Oriol, though, was heading for the victory, the two final stages that matter. Spare a thought for poor Bruno Thierry. The service regulations put him out of the event, but the car out in front was the Toyota heading for victory on the Tour of Corsica. First victory of the year for Oriol, first victory for Toyota Team Europe, and first victory for the new Celica. Sure, it's not easy rally. I think the strong man, it's, uh, 
Bruno Thierry, but uh, okay, that's life. It's a rally. It's difficult for him, but sometimes, some year before, I, I lost some rally and I am leader, so it's life. So, Oriol takes that victory 15 seconds ahead of Francois Delacour's Ford, with Andrea Aghini making it a fine third place on the new Mitsubishi's debut. The Subarus, the supporting act, fourth, fifth and sixth. And Carlos Sainz remains at the head of the Drivers' Championship. But Yuha Kankanen, Oriol, Delacour and Mackinnon behind are not a sign of Colin McRae. And Mitsubishi continue to lead the Manufacturers' Championship after four rounds ahead of Toyota, Subaru and Ford.